You know when you have a really long, plain, one color warp on your loom and you're like, damn, I like this color, but I wish I could just have some variety. Like, wouldn't it be nice if I could just mix up this warp slightly and make a complementary fabric to match my plain fabric? Like maybe an overcheck? Hey, it turns out you can, and they did a lot in Yorkshire weaving tradition. I know because I learned it from some guys who went to college and learned fabric design in the Huddersfield area in the 1960s when cloth manufacturing in that valley was still more of a thing. And it is still a thing, it's just not as much of a thing as it used to be. So I'm a volunteer at the Colne Valley Museum in Golker, which I can't recommend highly enough. It's an excellent museum. And since I've been there, I've learned all sorts about local weaving history and the practical ways of doing things, including today's topic, how to add an overcheck to your existing warp. I'm starting with this herringbone twill pattern and like, I get that people get all excited about their eight shafts and their fancy weaves, but I reckon the plain humble herringbone twill can stand proud among the most beautiful of fabrics. As a weaver though, once you've woven it for a few weeks, you want to jazz it up a bit. And you can do that by changing out some of the warp threads for threads of a contrasting color. My warp is gray and my weft is dark plum, so I've chosen a tangerine and an off-white to make stripes in the warp, and a sort of rust color to make stripes in the weft. Here's a little preview. I do a little preview for myself because I have made some terrible design decisions with color in the past and I don't want to go through this whole process only to decide that my taste was shit. Anyway, I do like the way this looks, so let's go. First, I need to choose where in the pattern the stripes should go and I've chosen to replace six threads at the pointy bit of every second chevron, so there will be 20 stripes. So I need to wind 20 short bundles of extra warp in the colors I've chosen. I'm doing two tangerine, two off-white, and two tangerine in each stripe, so I wind that many threads to a length that I will later decide was not quite long enough. And break all the ends so I've got six threads of equal length. With each bundle, I lay them out carefully in order, not overlapping because this yarn is really sticky and tends to snarl, and then I lift those six threads at the tip of the chevron and cut them. Not all at once. We need to keep them in order, so two at a time is manageable here. And tie on the new threads with an overhand knot, two tangerine, two off-white, and two tangerine. Having tied all six, I keep a bit of tension and stroke everything into order while my beautiful assistant pulls them gently back through the heddles and the cross, leaving me just enough to tie off onto a pin through the cloth. Me and my team of trusty helpful people repeat that until all the bundles have been pulled through and they make it only this far because the length of my extra warp bundles was ill thought through. But they could be longer and it would work the same. So this has resulted in those bits of warp being way longer than the rest of the warp and consequently extremely slack now. Those loose bits of warp that now hang over the back beam need to be tied into the warp at roughly the same tension as everything else. And this is my favorite part. The traditional tool for tying is a three inch galvanized nail. You can take the spare length of two or three pull throughs, pull it to about the right tension and then just wind it around the nail, binding it to a chunk of warp. These bunches can be slid up and down a bit to adjust tension. And of course they travel with the warp as it advances. So they can be uncoiled, moved along and retied as they get close to the cross. This still leaves a lot of excess below the bunched up tie-ins, so I like to butterfly up that extra length to keep things tidy. That's not actually how the guys at the museum do it. They just leave it all in a pile of spaghetti at the back of the loom and then later spend the better part of a day sorting out the tangled mess. And who am I to question tradition? Are you kidding? I questioned tradition 10 times before breakfast, so believe me, I am questioning that tradition loudly and clearly. So once all that's done, you can go back to this end of the loom and it behaves for all practical purposes as if those stripes were always there. Every few inches I'm adding a horizontal stripe into the weft using the second story of the drop box and just adding four picks of that rust color. Still getting used to the action of that second shuttle. Slightly different trajectory. Sometimes the warp is a bit sticky and I have to straighten out a wibbly pick so the right selvage is a bit of a mess, but I just don't care. I'm just gonna cut garments from this cloth anyway so the selvage will either be hidden in seams or it will be scraps. Somehow just having a pattern to progress makes it feel quite a lot less tedious to weave for hours and hours and oh my God, the result. I love it, it's lush which is why I now wish I'd put a little more length into those extra bits of warp. I'm only gonna have a little bit over a yard of this stuff. When I come to the ends of this tie-in, I just untie it at the back and pull all those bundles back through and secure them with pins, and I'm now back to an all gray warp. So all that remains is to cut it free, disengage the worm gear doohickey, pull the cloth off the beam, and chuck it in the wash on what I'm sure is a perfectly safe program. Subscribe to find out how that went.